Congregation, family and friends, I pray that all was well with you. Welcome to this edition of Bible Study. For this edition of Bible Study, we are going to be talking about natural versus spiritual. The natural versus spiritual. And uh, primarily, I think I'm going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. If you have a Bible with you, or if you're taking notes, we're going to be talking about the difference between the natural man and a spiritual man. Because there is a difference. There's a huge difference. It's the difference between a believer and an unbeliever. It's the difference between understanding the Word of God and not understanding it. It's the difference between having the Holy Spirit in you and not having the Holy Spirit in you. Let me move that out of the way here. Okay. So if you are with me in 1 Corinthians 2, we're going to be looking at several verses. Let me ask you this. Uh, if, if I'm talking to you right now and you are a believer and you're born again, you understand certain spiritual things when the Bible is preached because the Holy Spirit lives within you. And so you have spiritual discernment. Also, if you're a born-again believer, you should have a desire to read and study the Bible. And as you do that, you learn more and more spiritual truth. It doesn't come from our own wisdom. I didn't learn the Bible, and I'm not presently learning Scripture because of my own intelligence, because I'm some kind of smart person, because I'm not. The wisdom comes through the Holy Spirit. The wisdom comes from the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to show you in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 why that is. Because we cannot understand God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Bible, anything spiritual without the Holy Spirit being inside of us. And that's going to be the difference between the natural man and the spiritual man. And there's a reason why. If you remember, if you go through the Gospels, do you remember how many times Jesus preached in a parable? Remember? And we want to remember that a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly or spiritual meaning. A parable is something where if Jesus was talking about it, he was giving an example with earthly examples that everyone could understand, like the seed in the ground. All the farmers could have understood that. But then there was a greater spiritual or heavenly meaning attached to it. Well, very often he preached the parables and remember that his disciples would come to him and say, what did you mean by the parable? Please explain that to us. And we wonder why that happened. Why didn't everybody understand the parable the same way? And Jesus often gave the reason that it's because it's meant for certain people to understand. In other words, Jesus was going already knew, being eternal God, Jesus already knew who would accept the truth and who would reject the truth, who would hear it and who would not hear it, and who would uh, grasp on to his parable and learn from it and apply it to their spiritual life and who would have no interest in it. And so his disciples would come to him and say, explain to us the parable and he would go and explain it to them and then they would understand it because they were part of the troop of believers, except for Judas, of course. So if you're with me, I wanna read a few verses here in 1 Corinthians 2 and then we're gonna talk about it. Let's start in verse 12 of 1 Corinthians chapter two. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God, which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. Okay, we need to stop there. It says, we have received. Now, Paul is writing to the Corinthian church. And he's saying, we have received, not the Spirit of the world. Please notice the, the first word spirit there is lowercase, but the spirit who is from God, uppercase. So there's a difference between the spirit of the world, those thoughts and those things going on in the world, and the spirit of actual the living God, that is the Holy Spirit. There is a difference. The spirit of the world, the flavor of the world, the temper of the world, uh, the knowledge of the world. It says here, we have received things not from the spirit of the world. We don't learn earthly things from God, we learn spiritual things from God, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may know, we may know, not guess, not think, we may know the things freely given to us by God. If you are seeking God, if you are seeking Jesus Christ, if you are seeking the truth of Scripture, you will find it if you read it and you study it and you have ears to hear. You remember in Revelation 2 and Revelation 3, 
Jesus, um, through the Apostle John, is, is writing letters to the seven churches of Asia Minor. And at the end of what he says to each church, what does he say? He who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Because only those who are believers, only those who are born again, will actually understand spiritual things. But we also have a responsibility to try to ferret out what those spiritual things are. If we try to do it in our own intellect, we will fail. If we try to do it thinking that we know better than God, we will fail. If we try to read God's word without the illumination of the Holy Spirit, we will fail. We will fail every single time. And very often a byproduct of that is we come up with wrong interpretations. We come up with wrong meanings. We twist scripture to say something that it doesn't say. When we are involved in Bible reading, Bible study, and as we're going through scripture, we're not going to understand everything. I don't understand everything. After 30 plus years of reading scripture, I still don't get all of it. And I, I, I'm okay admitting that because we could read the Bible for a thousand years and still not get all of it. That's how deep it is. But we have a mandate from God to keep working at it and to study scripture. And I'm going to show you right in the next verse. We just read it. Verse 13. Which things we also speak. Now, Paul is connecting that thought. He says, we have received from the Spirit of God so that we know the things that are freely given to us. And we not only know it, but it's also the things we speak. And he says, not in words taught by human wisdom. We're not speaking those words to you. The gospel is not from human wisdom. The men who wrote, the holy men of old, the Bible says that they were moved to write as the Holy Spirit led them. It didn't come from their own wisdom. And those who say and who believe that this book, the Bible, is a man-made book, yet we have to understand what are they saying. Are you saying that man wrote down what God gave them? Yes. But if you're saying that the Bible is strictly written by man and God had nothing to do with it, or it's a fairy tale, or it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not true, or whatever, then you are in error. Because the Bible clearly says that the Bible was written by holy men of old as the Holy Spirit moved them. Paul was writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The same with James and John and Zechariah and all of those who authored books of the Bible. And that starts from Genesis all the way through to Revelation. Moses was writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit when he wrote Genesis and Numbers and Deuteronomy and so on. So Paul is saying, first of all, we're receiving this information from the Spirit of God, not from the Spirit of the world. It's not coming from the world. There is no wisdom. There's no godly wisdom, I should say, in the world. That's not possible. Not spiritual wisdom. Yes, there's lots of wisdom. There's lots of things we can learn in this world. I'm not saying we can't. All of us should be learning something every day. But when it comes to spiritual matters, when it comes to Scripture, only the Holy Spirit can illuminate. Only the Holy Spirit can enlighten us to figure out what the Bible is truly saying. Let's go back to verse 13 here. So Paul says in verse 12 again, he says, we received it from the Spirit of God so that we may know it. And now that we know it, we can speak it. Which things we also speak, verse 13, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit. Please notice again, this word Spirit is capitalized because we're talking about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, the third person in the triune God. So when Paul is talking, when Paul is preaching, they are not bringing wisdom. He is not bringing wisdom from himself or from the world. He's bringing it directly from the Holy Spirit to us. And then he gives us an instruction here. And this is where many people fall off the track. This we have to talk about. At the end of verse 13, he says, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words, uh, the word thought and words are added in. It's really combining spiritual with spiritual. What is Paul saying here? It says the things we speak, not in words taught by human wisdom. So we can put that aside. The wisdom that we receive from reading scripture and studying, it does not come from the world. But it comes through the Holy Spirit. Combining spiritual with spiritual. So let's stop right there. Now, you may have fallen into this trap. And I can honestly say that I have fallen into this trap over the years. 
Not so much lately, because I do so much studying and I make sure that before I teach and preach that it's correct. But if we don't, here's what, here's what he's talking about. Let's do it this way. When he says combining spiritual things with spiritual, let me give you an example. Suppose we're reading about heaven and we want to find out as much as we can about heaven. If we just read one passage or one portion where Jesus or someone else is talking about heaven and we just leave it at that, we can come to a conclusion that's not correct because we need to combine or to compare really spiritual things with spiritual things. And so if you want to get a clear understanding as much as God has revealed to us of what heaven is like or what it will be like or so on, you have to read every passage throughout scripture that talks about heaven all of it you have to read everything in regards to that and then you come to a conclusion you come to hopefully biblical truth now how do you know that you have biblical truth well first of all the holy spirit's going to guide you that's number one the holy spirit will guide you into truth but also you will have truth if the conclusion you came to harmonizes with everything the Bible has to say on that topic. You see, the Bible is, it's his own dictionary. It, it translates itself. It interprets itself. And to do proper Bible study, we're having a clue right here. You combine spiritual things with spiritual things. If I want to find out about heaven and I read a couple of passages in scripture, and then I go and read somebody's book, or I read something else or what somebody told me in the world about heaven and it doesn't jive with scripture i immediately do not have biblical truth and you can do this with any topic you want whether it's sin confession the holy spirit whatever topic you are studying we must look at all we must compare spiritual with spiritual we have to be able to compare passages together now does that sound daunting to you? Does that sound almost overwhelming to you? It can be, and it is. And for those of us who study scripture every day, and for those of us who have the responsibility of preaching and teaching the word of God, it is a, what do I, how do I want to say, painfully slow process. It's not painful. For those of us who are called to do, it is not painful. It's wonderful to learn new truth but it is a painfully slow, detailed study to make sure that what we are preaching and teaching is the truth. Now, here is where we fall off. I've spoken on this before in regards to false prophets, false teachers, a lot of these churches that are popping up that have absolutely nothing to do with scripture. And I think part of the reason why is this, because they're not comparing spiritual with spiritual. See, you can take a verse and you can take it out of context. And if you don't study it logically through all of Scripture, if you don't follow that thought all the way through, Peter warns us in one of his epistles that the Bible is not subject to private interpretation. In other words, I can't come up with a conclusion about a passage and you come up with another one and then you come up with another one and you come up with another one and we're all reading the same passage and we come to four different conclusions. That's impossible. One of us can be right. All of us can be wrong, but all of us cannot be right. Did you hear me? One of us might have stumbled onto the truth and been illuminated by the Holy Spirit. All of us could be wrong, but there's no possibility that all of us can be right. That's impossible because there's only one truth. There's only one Bible. There's only one God in three persons. There's only one holy word of God. God didn't write any more books than this. I mean, there's 66 in here. You cannot find the Bible volume two. There is no sequel. And so, and so here's what we want to look at. Let me go on to the next verse here, because I want to show you what the difference is between the spiritual and the natural, because we're looking at the, the uh, varieties, which one is different. So since we already have the principle that we need to combine spiritual with spiritual, then it says in verse 14, but a natural man does not accept the things of the spirit of God. They don't accept them for they are foolishness 
to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. What is, what is Paul saying here? The natural man, the person who does not have the Holy Spirit in them, a person who is not born again, a person who is not redeemed by the blood of Christ, cannot understand spiritual things. So that, that leads us to another situation, doesn't it? It leads us to a situation because what happens when we are witnessing to people or we're talking to people and they don't seem to grasp it? Does that mean that they will never come to truth? No, because the Bible tells us that some plant, some water, and God gives the increase. So let's say we're teaching or we're witnessing to someone and a few people get the truth. They see it. But a whole bunch of people don't see the truth. They don't get it. It's because they are still the natural man. Now look at this again. A natural man does not accept. They will not accept the things of the Spirit of God. They will not accept that this is the Word of God. They will not accept that Jesus is, is the Messiah and that he's the only way to heaven. They will not accept that we must have a substitute for our sins. They will not accept that there's a heaven and a hell. They won't accept these things. They won't accept the things of the Spirit of God. Why? For they are foolishness to him. We've all known, before you and I were saved, if I'm talking to someone who's a true believer, before you and I were saved, the Bible was foolishness to us. We may have seen it as fairy tales. We may have seen it as it's just not true, or it's an archaic book that has nothing to do with today's society, and why should we pay attention, or God is a mean God, or whatever we may have been thinking. The Bible and spiritual things and salvation in Christ, all of that was foolishness. We did not want to hear it. And we all know plenty of people right now who do not want to hear it. We all know. I know plenty of people that I've witnessed to or I'm praying to, and they simply say, then that is, does that include our natural man? I'm not sure what you mean by that, but natural man is someone who does not, has not accepted the Holy Spirit, does not have spiritual insight, spiritual wisdom. It's right here. It says, a natural man does not accept the Spirit of God, the things of the Spirit of God, because they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. But, verse 15, but he who is spiritual appraises all things, yet he himself is appraised by no one. And so here's what we have. We have the natural versus the spiritual. Before we are saved, we are part of the natural. After we are saved, if indeed we are truly saved, if we are truly born again, we move from the natural over to the spiritual. Now, in, in a human sense, are we still natural people? We haven't changed. We all still look the same. We, you know, we're all human beings, part of the human race. But what has changed is the spiritual insight. What has changed is the fact that we can start reading scripture and we begin to understand what God is talking about. It's completely different. It's not foolishness to us. A matter of fact, the Bible is the bread of life. It's the river of living water. This is what we need to survive. This is what we need. We need spiritual food more so than we need physical food. We need to make sure that we are right with God. We need to make sure that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. We need to make sure that we understand heaven versus hell because that both of those places are real places, both of them. And all of us are going to go from one place to the other. One of us is going to end up, all of us will end up in one place or the other, I should say. Now, if you at this point right now as I'm speaking, if you're still on the natural side, if what I'm saying or someone else you may be listening to or another preacher or a church you go to, if it's foolishness to you, the only way for you to come to understanding and truth is for the Holy Spirit to open your eyes, for the Holy Spirit to open your eyes. It said it right here. We don't gain the wisdom of God from the world. And so we need to be able to, okay, I just had to remove someone there that wasn't making a whole lot of sense. Okay, sorry for that. Let's, let's regroup here. Let me go back and read this section again, beginning in verse 12. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God. Notice the word freely. We didn't look at that a few minutes ago. Freely, which things we also speak. 
not in words taught by human wisdom. See, there's a side. There's a natural side. There's a spiritual side. We must make sure that we're on the spiritual side. It says, but those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual things with spiritual. So I want to review this again. This is very important that we understand this because I don't know how you may have been trained or taught to read and study Scripture. But the worst thing you can do is read a portion of Scripture and say, ah, that's what it means without checking out the rest of scripture, without checking out everything else that the Bible has to say about that topic. For instance, here's another one. Let's say you wanted to discuss divorce. You wanted to find out what the Bible says about divorce. Well, you could go to a certain uh, couple of places, maybe 1 Corinthians 7, I believe it is. You can go to a Matthew 19 where Jesus talks about divorce. But you need to be able to go to every area, every part of Scripture that talks about divorce so that you can understand exactly what God is saying. Now, now, so you may be wondering, why did God write the Bible like this? Why did he write it to be so confusing? Well, here's the answer. Think of it this way. Suppose the Bible was written just like a novel, okay? Suppose the Bible was written where you could just read it front to back, you read it once and you put the book back on the shelf or you trade it in at a used bookstore. You take it back to the library and you say, I've already read the book. You read it once, maybe down the road because it was a favorite book. You read it a second time. That's, if we did that with the Bible, if you read Genesis through Revelation once and then you closed the Bible, of course you don't know everything that's in Scripture. You read it once. The Bible was meant to be studied. And many of us fall short on that. I know we all have busy lives. We all have things. You need to make Bible reading a priority. You need to make Bible reading something that's part of your daily, daily routine. Bible reading and Bible study. And it's the only way you're going to come up with truth. The only way. So let's look at this passage again. I, I, I can't emphasize this enough. And if it sounds like I'm repeating myself, I'm doing it on purpose. There's a difference between natural versus spiritual. When we become spiritual, when I went from being unsaved to being saved, my physical appearance didn't change. My voice didn't change. My look didn't change. My natural intellect didn't change. What happened was my spiritual eyes were open. My spiritual ears were open. I was suddenly aware of the truth of God's word. It suddenly was truthful to me. It suddenly started making sense to me. I started realizing that I needed our Lord, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I needed the, the, the wisdom of what's in Scripture. It suddenly stopped being foolishness to me, and it started meaning serious business to me. Now, getting called into, into ministry came years later. Okay? So, let's go over this again. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us, from God, which things we also speak, not in words, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual with spiritual. Okay, hold on a moment, folks. Yep. Tonight is the night they are coming out. So we're just going to do some house cleaning here. Please bear with me. Bear with me and see if we can... Get back on track. Okay, let's see if that helps. Okay, the trolls are out tonight. The trolls are out tonight. You know why? Because I'm preaching truth. You know why? Because I'm teaching you the difference between the natural man and the spiritual man. And guess what? The demons are upset. Natural man is coming out. And so they figured by putting some stuff on here that it's going to stop the word of God from going forward. It is not going to stop the word of God from going forward. It is not going to stop. And so if you want to play games, you don't want to be serious about it, then this, what I'm teaching, is foolishness to you. I'll be praying for you. But I'm not going to have you come on the screen here and just put a bunch of nonsense when we're trying to talk about serious things. So let's finish this up because I do like to keep these to about a half hour. Okay, let's, let's keep this tight in a half hour. The only way, let me go over my main points again. When we receive wisdom, spiritual wisdom, it comes from the Spirit of God. Simple as that. It comes from the Spirit of God. It does not come from our own intellect and from the world. 
And what Paul is saying is those things that we've received from the Spirit of God, we're now going to speak to you. What I have received from the Spirit of God, I'm speaking to you. What I have learned from Scripture that can be proved scripturally, I'm sharing with all of you that are interested and, and that can hear it. Some of you will hear it. Some of you will not hear it. That's just the way that it happens. When in, whenever we preach or teach the Word of God, some people will hear it and some people will not hear it. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. And so because we have this wisdom, if you're comparing spiritual things with spiritual, you will be amazed. You will be in wonderment of how much Bible truth you can learn once you do it God's way. Don't try to do it your way. Do it God's way. You compare scripture with scripture because the only way to come to truth is doing it God's way. Now, remember, the natural man, it says here, does not accept the things of the spirit of God. They're not interested because they're foolishness to him and they cannot understand them because they are spiritually, they're spiritually bankrupt. They're not interested. And here's what it is. It's not that bad people. That's not it. It's they don't have the spiritual insight. God has not opened their spiritual eyes and spiritual ears, not opened their heart and soul to the truth of the gospel. At one time, I was like that. At one time, the Bible was foolishness. At one time, I didn't need Jesus as my Lord and Savior. At one time, you couldn't have paid me enough to sit down and, and study scripture. Now, you can't get me to close the book. That's the difference. And so, when we're looking at this passage, I encourage you to go through this passage and study this for yourself again. So that you have a clear understanding, first of all, the difference between natural versus spiritual, that's number one. And number two, that you have an understanding that the way to get scripture uh, clarified in your mind and to get truth is to compare passages, compare scripture with scripture. And if you do that, you will find that you will be growing in leaps and bounds in your Bible knowledge. Will we always get it right? No. But will we grow in truth so that we can then communicate that truth to other people? So that we can then teach other people or witness to others and show them what God showed us so that we can show them. That's the beauty of it, being able to share scripture. And so I want to thank you for being part of this Bible study. Please pardon the interruptions that came through. That's what happens when you teach the word of God. Sometimes the trolls come out and that's just the way it is. Uh, if this Bible study has blessed you, if it has helped you, please feel free to share it. Isaiah 55, 11 says, God's word does not return void. It reaches those people it was meant to reach. Did it reach you tonight? Did it convict you tonight? Did it get you to think of something tonight and, and maybe convict you in some way? That's all, that's, that's all I'm looking for because God will open your eyes to the truth. I can't do it. I can only share with you what I know as truth from Scripture, but I can't share it with you. I can't get you to open your eyes, I should say. So please share it if you feel that it was beneficiary. And also, of course, be Bereans. Acts 17, 11 say the Bereans were more noble than all others. Why? They weren't richer. They weren't smarter. They weren't nicer. They received the word with all readiness. See, their spiritual eyes were open. Their spiritual hearts were open. Their ears and eyes were open to the truth. But you see, they didn't stop there. Because the Bible says in Acts 17, 11, that once they heard the word with all readiness, they were eager. They went and searched the scriptures to make sure what they were hearing was true. They were comparing spiritual with spiritual. There's a perfect example, as I talk about the Bereans all the time, a perfect example of comparing spiritual with spiritual. You hear a sermon, whether it's myself or Bible teaching or a local church you belong to, someone on social media somewhere, somebody you watch on television, be very careful with those television preachers. Most of them are phony. Most of them don't know what they're talking about. They're leading a lot of people down the wrong path. Same with a lot of these folks on social media. Got to be very careful. Got to be a Berean. You've got to study. Compare spiritual with spiritual. Spend time in the Bible that the Holy Spirit enlighten you and teach you it is the only way to truth. It is the only way to truth. Also, would you please pray for this ministry? This ministry here, um, we, you know, have our, we have our challenges. Like any faithful ministry, we have our challenges. Would you please pray that we would stay firm, we would stay on the front lines, stay out front for Jesus, preaching boldly, without fear, without fear, without contradiction, without favoring anyone. There's not too many that I know that actually come out and preach the actual word of God and don't skip over passages and don't just sugarcoat it and, and sweet coat it so that you only hear things that you want to hear. 
So please keep this ministry in your prayers as we stand on the front lines for Jesus, not only on social media, but also in local pulpits when we travel, when we have an opportunity to share the gospel in different meetings and so on. And if the Lord would lead you to support us, if, if God is leading you to support us financially, you can do it right through our website, livinginharmonyministries.org, or you can do it right through Facebook Messenger. It's quick, it's easy, it's secure. I leave that between you and God. That is between you and God. Some of you I know do support us. We thank you for that. And anything that you give us goes right back into the ministry because we want to keep doing what God has called us to do. I thank you for being part of the Bible study tonight. God bless you.